Hello and welcome to a Taylor's Tales podcast. This is Chris's Corner. I'm your host, Chris Taylor, and we're back. Well, I say we. I'm back this week, and it's another solo podcast, an update podcast, a news podcast. Uh, just to break up the guests. I know, I know, it's my face instead of some more beautiful people, but you're going to have to get used to it. The schedule has to break these things up. People can't be here every week. And, uh, you know, you greedy buggers are going to you know, want more. And I'll keep producing as, as it comes. And uh, I, I love every second of it. And I can't stay mad at any of you. <laughs> anyway, moving straight in. Um, th- this week, well, there's so much stuff going on. There's so much stuff going on in the world and it's hard to relax and just remind yourself that things are going to be okay. I know that's a consistent message you're being fed, um, but the media makes it sound like the world's going to fall apart every minute. Uh, and, you know, f- from from my perspective, I think it's just best we take the, the things day by day because it's so easy to say once COVID's over, once lockdown's over, once this is over. We've been saying that for months now. And I think that's the problem is that people are holding on to this, like everything so tightly that it gets to a point now where we're all, we're all just hoping for that end, for that, that bit to get back to normal. Again, these, these sort of key words that keep on clicking normal getting back the new normal, all of these buzzwords, as you may see in the news at the moment, in COVID and new variant and deaths. And, you know, they, they keep the BBC, I, I give them credit for, for what, when credit's due when it comes down to recording and not, you know, not bombarding us with false news and like some countries. And I think that although it is accurate news, there is a point to, just seeing death, 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 COVID. And I know we all need a reality check every now and then. I'm not saying we don't, but it's important to understand that we need to have a little bit of joy every now and then. And I'm not someone who's naive enough to say that there isn't, you know, there isn't some reality checks needed every now and then. But, you know, I'm just going to go through it. I'm just going to get into the news because there's enough rambling about the world and my philosophies around it and my opinions, because this isn't about bias. This is about trying to entertain and to give some news and not to, you know, bombard you with the stuff that I've just been talking about, ironically. So what has been going on in the world at the moment? Well, obviously, let's get the worst out of the way. Donald Trump is out of the white house um biden is in and as as a uk citizen as a citizen it doesn't necessarily make a lot of you know to make a lot of difference to me politically speaking but you've got to think about the fact that it's going to affect the world on a on a greater scale especially the west in the sense that we have a lot of ties in the uk and so does europe a lot of trade with those countries is important and um, how things happen in America financially does reflect and on, on how financially the rest of the world does. And I know not everyone likes to hear that, but it is true. Um, and so one thing that I would love to have seen is as Donald Trump left the White House, we could have had um, Ann Robinson from The Weakest Link been there and said, you are the weakest link. Goodbye. And just have him walk out and just, just wave away and just had some sort of sassy mo- remark said to him as he walks off stage. But we live in the real world and fun uh, sort of nut- dream world things like that that I come up with in my head uh, do not happen, sadly. But anyway, moving on, because that is just everywhere. It's just consistency and the media make so much money off him and his how can we put it more than life personality let's put it that that's a nice way of putting it uh we're now three weeks into lockdown within the uk and europe um and i I think i recently saw that northern ireland is extending their lockdown which is of you know we all understand why we all understand why we've got to do this um it doesn't make it any easier for the smaller businesses. It doesn't make it easier for the school kids. It doesn't make it easier for the teachers and the frontline workers and, and those who are essential. 
uh, and and those who, who keep this country running and, and and many other countries i'd like to point out because it's very easy to get that sort of tunnel vision and just think that you're the one suffering the most you're not everybody's suffering at the moment everyone's having that issue apart from australia and new zealand of course who are having have a lot of fun but let's be honest if we were in their position right now we'd all be doing the same we'd all be having a great time we'd all be having a you know love enjoying the time in the sun and it goes without saying that they did a bang up job and it's you know fantastic on their and their part for uh, dealing with it and getting on with it and well in new zealand from what i'm aware eliminating covid altogether which is bloody impressive to say the least um yeah so with with lockdown there's a lesson to be learned here and i think it's very easy to keep imagining what the history lessons we're going to see in the future do you remember we talked about world war ii when we were at school when we had history in the UK, we talk about World War II a lot, World War One, because, you know, we're on the victor, victor side. So it's very easy for us to talk about it. I think that there's also a reminder there that in 10, maybe 20 years time, we're going to have our kids and then, you know, the next generations, they're going to be having to learn about this, you know, this period of time, like, like with, it, it's, a, it's a mental battle rather than a physical one. How long can you mentally deal with your own presence without having to go insane? Because it let's you know I'm I'm quite a upbeat person who doesn't have that sort of I can I can deal with being on my own for a long period of time, but damn, I wouldn't be able to deal like a year on my own without my family. I mean, I'm so glad I, I came home. Uh, I'm used to living in my own apartments and in my final year at university, I was with a couple of mates and that was great. And that was a fantastic year. And so was my year uh, before that on my own. And then it, it, you get all the space and time, but here's the big but. You have the ability to travel and go see the people that you wanna see. That's what people who are on their own at the moment don't have at the moment. They have, they're isolated. They're on their own. And it's, you know, I'm damn thankful that I'm not because I wouldn't have that ability, that, that enjoyment of being able to pick and choose when I get to do stuff. It's, it's that freedom that we, that I especially took for granted at the time. And I say that I didn't take for granted. I enjoyed every second of it and I still do. Uh, the freedoms that we currently have, you know, we can imagine that this, I said this the other day, this is basically the, 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 the people in lockdown at the moment uh, in Europe and in the UK. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't know about Asia at the moment. I'm, I'm not aware of any lockdowns happening there. But in, in these cases, we're basically living in luxury prisons. You know, you, you think about that for a second. We are like the celebrity or the financial accountant who gets sent to prison and they have the money to be able to have all the luxuries, the video games, the luxury foods, the tennis courts, all of that stuff, except they can't leave somewhere. And that's exactly what we're dealing with. We're luxury prisoners of our own world at the moment. And so this is what I talked about in the, in the previous podcast with my previous guest, David, is that we talked about realities. We talked about how do we deal with our own realities. And I'm not trying to be philosophical. I'm not trying to sound like one of those guys who knows what he's talking about. I don't. The point is, is that you've got to deal with what you have at the moment, day by day, because we can't keep saying, like I said earlier, uh, um, when COVID's over, I'm going to do this. When when lockdown's over, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to go all out and I'm going to go drinking. And I'm going to see my friends and I'm going to go da, 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 da. No, this is what is causing these part, you know, we're in lockdown part three. And it's because of, you know, that thought process, that same thought process where I'm quick, I've got to get out. I've got to go do stuff while I still can before the next lockdown, damn. You know, use use this time to really think what's sensible. Now, in, from my perspective, for the past, I would say from we are now in January, I want to, and it come March, it will be a year that myself and my family have basically isolated ourselves from everyone that we know. We've had a bubble with a family member, 
uh, and they've come and visited. And then I've had one friend visit in that entire period of time. Now, to a lot of people, that sounds quite extreme. But from what we've heard from, you know, our contact in the in the Royal Barks Hospital, it's important to do what we're doing to, to isolate, even though we don't have COVID, even though we've never had it. And we or if we have, we had no idea about it. Um, we haven't got ill. But the point is, is that we're doing this because we care. It's not because we should or we shouldn't. It's because it's morally right. And you should be thinking to yourself, and I'm not trying to lecture anyone here. I'm just saying from my perspective, I want to look back and I want to say to myself, like, damn, you did the right thing. I don't want to have to have any regrets. I don't have any so far. I don't want to start creating them. I don't want to be that guy who people look on the news and see that he's broken a load of rules and is having to pay fines. Like, no way. Set the right example, you know? It doesn't matter who you are, if you, however many followers or bloody views or whatever, you know, the world works on nowadays. It's important to just set the right standard. Anyway, I'm moving on because it sounds like I'm lecturing. I, I'm, I'm going to try and stop, stop you all from thinking that I'm trying to force ideas on you. I'm not. I'm just, I'm just giving you a perspective of, of my mindset that is a little bit chaotic <laughs> as you can tell um so moving on to something a little more light-hearted or maybe, well i say light-hearted to me it's quite serious is that chelsea football club is going into the ground right now <laughs> it's not it's not a great statement to make um yeah i don't know what to say really apart from the fact that tactically speaking it seems like frank has has an idea he has, he's got a few players in that team who will play so well for him. You've seen Benjamin Mendy come into the team, we've seen Thiago Silva, we've seen defense, Kurt Zuma um, and Mason Mount. And these, these key players have come in and they've just played for Frank. And they've done so well. They've, 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 they really have. And I know that we've gone on a losing streak. I don't genuinely think that the, defend, the central defenders or the goalkeeper are to blame. And I don't think Mason Mounted as well because he plays a bloody heart out and I love it and he's a legend and he deserves all the credit he's got at the moment because he's a workhorse and he reminds him and Madison James Madison for Leicester City they're two players that you know they're relatively young they're a couple of years younger than me and they are just so likable how can you not like them they they set the right standard on the pitch and off the pitch just exactly what you want to see so yes those players Yes, there's a lot of people who, who, are, who are blaming some of the new signings coming into our club. Yes, they're not performing at the top level at the moment, but I'd like to point out that the, here, here's the irony behind that. Werner, who is being the biggest target on the Chelsea team, yes, he's fluffed a lot of lines at the moment, but if you go look at the stat, he's our top scorer <laughs> for the club. So even though he's fluffing his lines, there's no one else in the entire team scoring as many goals. Giroud went out on a streak. Um, he hasn't played as many games. He's, they've got the same amount of goals. So although Werner hasn't scored in 10 games, he's still scored more goals than anyone else and still has assists to his name. And he's been played out of position for, I'm pretty sure out of those 10 games, around six or seven of them. So to me... It's very easy for the media to, to label Frank and to say he's not performing at the well. I, I hate the fact that loads of people are already putting up uh, images of replacement managers for Frank. Um, nothing makes me more angry than people taking it upon themselves to say that this man doesn't deserve a job anymore, even though we're not even half, you know, we're... We're not even into the final leg of the season yet. We've got still time to go. We've still got games to turn it around. So I'm I'm an optimist. I don't I think Frank can turn it around and I think we've got the players to do it. And I think he knows exactly what he needs to do. And he's got a nice run of games coming up. If he can win them, that's it. He's crew sailing, he'll win back the fans, and he won't even have to think about his job being on the line afterwards. And by the end of the season, we'll get top four place and we won't think about it. But I did predict in the last update podcast, I did say if we lost to Arsenal, it would be a downhill from there because we needed that momentum. We didn't get the momentum and that's why we lost all these games. And I'm not saying I predicted it, but I am saying that I did see something bad coming because you could see it in the team that there wasn't somebody mentally strong enough to lead the team. 
Uh, and I don't think there is at the moment, unlike in Man United, where we where they have Fernandez, who is just leading that team forward into success. So we need we need somebody in our our team to step up and lead the way. Uh, and I don't think Mason Mount, even though he is a he is setting the standard, he's not one of the senior pl- players in the club to to do so. Um, so I'm hoping that that can that can be established. And apart from my uh, opinion on a, a sport I don't professionally play and, and I've never been too good at, but love to watch. Um, I do like just having a natter about it, just like everybody else. Um, anyway, moving on. So as I've spoken to you guys about in previous podcasts, I'm a big fan of anime. I used to watch um, part season four of Haiku uh, every Saturday morning. It would make my day, basically. I'd have just a, a fantastic um, weekend just based off starting the, the weekend from that. I've now replaced that with um, a series I've watched before, which I saw subbed instead of dubbed. I'm now watching it in dubbed, and it's Kuroko's Basketball. Uh, I haven't watched it in something like four years, and I'm loving it. I'm loving watch, re-watching it, re-watching a couple of episodes, and doing the same thing where I wake up on Saturday, read a book, write in my journal and then have some coffee and, and, and watch that. And I think this is this is what I'm trying to get across is that get yourself some nice routines going, some enjoyable routines that you that makes you love the weekend and makes you love the week, make, make you love your job because you need you need these things to keep you going. I know it's not easy. And I know it's the world's making it sound like everything's coming to a close. It's not. It's going to keep going for years. You know, we, we're going to be laughing about this in a, in a few years' time, but we can get through this. And little things like this, you know, little things like watching your favorite anime, or watching your favorite TV show, or, you know, if you if you like, um, um, my parents love Frasier. If you love Frasier, you know, you love watching like a 30 minute episode of that with the laugh track going in the background and watching that. Watch an episode, make brighten your day up, put a smile on your face because there's nothing worse than, you know, getting up in the mornings and being in a negative mood immediately. You need to start the day off right and get yourself enjoying the day. And, I don't know. Find something, find something that drives you. Moving on to more things that, you know, that, that are driving me at the moment fitness. Fitness and running. So I've talked about this before, previous podcasts, we all know this. I've, and on a weekly basis, I post about running because I'm a madman. And because I love it beyond belief. Um, my fitness routine at the moment is obviously, it, it gets a little bit tedious because obviously I've, I've got just a pair of dumbbells and some exercise bands. But I did buy a skipping rope recently. So I'm getting into skipping, <laughs> trying, to, trying to do something new. Uh, and and then go out of my comfort zone and, and do something that I've never done before. And with my running, I'm increasing my running. So I was doing last year uh, three runs a week, uh, doing a minimum of eight miles on the Sunday and then four miles on Wednesday and Friday. Now I'm doing four miles on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then a minimum of eight on the Sunday. I have gone into a routine at the moment of running 11 on the Sunday and I think I've already hit over the I want to say 60 slash 70 mile marker already uh actually let's look that up because I don't want to say anything on this podcast that you know I could be falsifying my um results let's let's have a look let's 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 go straight to run keeper yes that's right i think it was david who said uh, i use a different sort of app. i use run keeper sir <laughs> i use run keeper i do not use um, strava like everybody else <laughs> um yes so monthly yearly yes so i'm not telling porky pies 72.4 miles at a seven minute in 42 and 40 uh, second pace so seven minutes and 40 seconds per mile uh, at the moment. And I'm really feeling good about this, guys. Really am. This year, I'm, I'm going to smash that 782 miles I did last. Sorry, not 700, 750 I did last year. Um, and I'm aiming for over a thousand. And I think I can do that at this pace. Uh, I think I need to just be hitting over 80 miles a month. I think that's right. I think it's, let me have a look. 
Let's, let's, let's do some calculations live at the moment. I know this is not what I'm known for. I'm normally a planned person on the podcast. I don't wing things, but you know, we, 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 we move. <laughs> 83.3 recurring. Yes. So 83.3 recurring for per month. And uh, yeah, that shouldn't be a problem. It shouldn't be a problem. I'm not injured at the moment. I'm not, you know, I'm stretching. Important. Go out and stretch, people. If you're not stretching after a workout, please do. Uh, that's something that's really helped me. I, I stretch out my hip flexors every time I work out after a, a fitness. Uh, so for instance, today I did back, biceps, uh, chest and abs. And every time I do that, I do four exercises with 150 reps for each of those. And it adds up to around 600 reps. I normally go over that so that I can really push myself. And then I'll do some sort of cardio afterwards. Saturday, sometimes I go for a walk. Today I didn't have I, I didn't feel like it as sometimes you don't you don't have to but um, I was just a little bit knackered uh, from the week and I did some skipping did around 10 15 minutes of that burned some extra calories out of that and enjoyed some some more food and with my fitness routine like I said even though it gets stale just by adding that skipping in there uh, or uh, boxing as well I've started doing boxing you know adding these new things it keeps things fresh you know, and with a new year in, with January in, where normally I'd be at the gym and I'd see all these new people and it'd be fun to see. And I love seeing no, new people get into the gym because it's like, yeah, we've got some new allies amongst the many to, to try and, you know, become a bigger group. Because there's nothing I like more than talking with people about how they're progressing. One of my closest friends at the moment, he's, he's, he's addicted to the gym as much as I am. And it is absolutely just, I, it makes me so proud of him to see where he's come from, to see where he is now and how much fun he's having. And yeah, wow. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I did this last podcast, didn't I? I yeah, get emotional too much over these sort of things, but it, it really does mean a lot to me when I, when I say something and, and people, you know, sort of listen up and, you know, try and make their own path because I, I've been inspired by so many other people out there, so many people who are my dad's age. My dad himself obviously inspires me on a regular basis because of how hard he works. Um, and then also all the, all the people his age, like Jordan Peterson and Joe Rogan and, and Jocko Willink and Courtney DeWater and, and David Goggins, they all, they all give me this just sort of want to be a better person and i think this is this is what this is about i think that this lockdown is the perfect time for everybody to look in the mirror really think about what they've got at the moment think about how how they can better themselves mentally during this time and try and achieve a few goals so speaking of goals we've talked about fitness and, and running and how i'm gonna try and hit over a thousand this year and i'm gonna make sure that i try and get a marathon time because I, I talked about this in, in my first podcast uh, about how I'm going to try and run a marathon in three hours and 30 minutes or less. And for me, that's just running under an eight minute pace, which I can do, as I just spoke about a minute ago. But the problem isn't the timing. The problem is maintaining the pace and then getting past that 20 mile mark. I've always been able to get past. I can always run a marathon you know in less in, in lesser time than that because but it, it it burns me out really does and i have to eat a lot of food to be able to do it but it's that three hours and 30 minutes i just want to get below that as soon as i get below that it's just i feel like i've achieved all of these you know the past five years of of, of working hard will feel like they've paid off so that's something for me i hope you got you know you're thinking of goals it doesn't have to be running, by the way. I know there's cyclists, skateboarders, um, bikers, whatever you, you're doing, like whatever you love. Rock climbing. I love rock climbing as well. Say, say you want to move from uh, like a green band to purple band when you're in the rock climbing section. Try that, you know. Do a cup, do some back exercises so you strengthen um, your back when you're working at the rocks at climbing center or do some bicep curls to be able to strengthen up your biceps and try or, or do some tricep extensions to be able to strengthen for your arms when you're reaching for that next rock you know something something anything um, something I'm doing at the moment I've talked about this before I'm, I'm trying to use Duolingo as much as I can I'm doing French and German at the moment um, 
and I'm doing very basic stuff in German. I can tell you that right now. You know, I'd be the same. Danke, Bischbolder, Bischbapa. I'm trying to think of all the phrases, the basic phrases that are coming out. Obviously, like die Frauen, der Mann, um, das Mädchen, and der Junge. So it, it, just just saying these basic sort of phrases for German. German is my German is wor way worse than my French. I can read some German, but you know it's it's speaking it that I suck at. For French, I can I can have a, a basic conversation. You know, just sort of salut, comment ça va? You know, how are you? And going from there, it, it goes into like what what have I been up to? You know, just je, je we. Je visite au cinéma, you know, stuff like that. Just very basic stuff, stuff from school. But I'm just using Duolingo to get me back into that stuff and try and get into learning a different language because I see so many amazing people out there who speak English and their native language. And it makes me feel as somebody who's English, just feel a little bit sort of, I don't know, lesser because I, because our nation isn't exactly known for putting a lot of effort into trying to speak another language. And um, I don't know, I just, I kind of, I just feel it's my obligation, my duty to try and, try, you know, learn something different uh, and try and adapt to a different culture. So I'm definitely going to be visiting those two countries at some point when there's not a travel ban so that I can pra practice those languages in person. Um, and I, I want to practice more because I tried doing I think it's the app's called Tendum, where you speak with another person in their language. And I did it for a day and I realized how out of my depth I was when I did it. I was like, I started having conversations with people and I was like, oh no, I can't get past this part. And I had to start asking people to, to, to say, how do you say this? And how do you say that? And like one of them was speaking to me in German and I had to like Google translate one of the pieces that they said to me because it was just so embarrassing. And I said, I told this person, this girl that I, I did this and I was like, oh, just, just the most embarrassing thing you have to explain to somebody that you've Google translated while you're trying to learn a language that they're speaking for. Anyway, enough of me embarrassing myself on applications to strangers. Um, yeah, something again, meditation. We talked about the previous podcast on mental health, well-being. I've done great, guys. I did what I said I did. I've, I've got into a routine. I think I've done 10 days this year so far of meditation. For me, that's really good. <laughs> I know that doesn't sound a lot. I know we're 22. Yeah, we're 22 days, 20, yeah, 23 days into uh, the year. And so it's, um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not great. But I'm getting there. I'm, I'm doing the technique that I've told before. I'm, I'm listening to Star Wars music, meditating, using my phrase, my, my little mantra of I'm one with the force, the force is with me. Um, or as I was saying the other day, uh, je suis avec une. No, that's not right. I am one. Uh, yeah, I am. Uh, je, je suis une avec force. I am one with le force. Sorry, I should say. Je, je suis une avec le force. <laughs> oh my God, that's probably so wrong. Uh, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's, it's, it's trying that counts, guys it, 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 and girls and whoever's listening, where, wherever you are, whoever you are, uh, or watching for that matter, you know, on YouTube. I forget about that sometimes. It's, uh, it's a weird one. But yeah, meditation. I, I definitely think that there's something to it. It definitely helps me just just really disconnect before i'm going to bed and one more feather to add to my cap because i do love it and i do love talking about it with people because it is something that is it's quite a buzzword at the moment you know meditation and with um i think it was headspace back in 2017 it wasn't as popular as it is now and the person who got me into meditation was a guy who I worked with back and back when I was a contractor and he was into meditation for different reasons. He was into meditation because it was part of his religion basically. And he really got me into it and it was, you know, he was spiritually connected to it, uh, which was inspiring because I'm not 
a spiritual I wasn't then a very very spiritual person and I've become more spiritual as I've got older through connection of discovering a religion that I didn't know about that I didn't grow up with uh, and Buddhism for me is 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 trans translated the world into into me beca- becoming a better person but also using it as a way to connect with different people and to try and judge less and I wouldn't have it anyway either way I, I've learned the lessons along the way that have got me to where I am today and I think meditation is one of those things that you you, you wouldn't learn when you're a young person when you're below the age of 20 because it's something that doesn't necessarily make sense and although I wouldn't say to parents not to try and get your kids into it it's just that it, it I wouldn't recommend to my 18 year old self to try and meditate purely on the basis that it wouldn't have done anything for me. I wouldn't be, it wouldn't de-stress me. It would just, I'd just be bored because I wasn't connected mentally then. I wasn't as all there as I am now. And I didn't think a lot of people can say that, you know, that is seven years ago. So that is a long time for me in my life. I know that's not for everybody, but you know, for, for me it is. Moving on, let's think about what's up and coming in the podcast to come. So I've done a little bit of, uh, I've been a little bit disorganized over the past a few weeks those who've listened before i have mixed up the organization this time of the podcasts that have been organized that's just because um i haven't pre-recorded some of these i have had to do them the day before release uh, and that's my fault purely because i have as i've said been disorganized but next week we will go and do batman begins podcast with uh, my friend uh, ollie deacon who's been on the podcast before many times and will continue to do so for our film reviews and he will be doing the batman series with me which we will start next week and i'll hope, hopefully bang it out and get it sorted after that uh we're going to do a, another star wars lads podcast where we're going to continue some of the discussions we had before there were a couple of subjects that i didn't get a chance to talk with the, the guys about and hopefully we're going to have uh Alex Young back on the podcast for that Star Wars Lads podcast because he wasn't available that previous podcast and he should be this time. Uh, for those who don't know, it's Alex's birthday today. So happy birthday, Ali. This is this will be released the day after your birthday. Um, but as of recording, it is Alex's birthday today. So yes, he is 26 and he is an absolute legend. He's been on the podcast before and uh, we look forward to having him back again. Uh, the podcast after the Star Wars one will be a either a history one, history re- sort of discussion, sort of what 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 would I call it? it? It's not really a review of history. It's more of a a topical debate with myself. <laughs> uh, uh, either history one or a book review where I go through a new book. Um, I've been reading I, this month something that I haven't spoke about yet is that i finished ready player one and i'm halfway through ordinary men by christopher browning and ready player one i've i've listened to before but i've I've read it this time and i love i love that book so much it's so much fun it has some characters who are just lovable characters it's so much better than the movie it has so much more detail so many cool references to the to the 80s and all round fantastic book uh, and Ordinary Men, complete opposite, completely non-fantasy. It's about um, German police officers in a reserve, reserve unit that were forced to shoot Jewish citizens. Um, and it was the, pro- they, he, Christopher Browning talks about the process of how they've gone from ordinary men to mass murderers, basically horrible subject but it's interesting to know because you need to understand that the world isn't perfect and there are bad people out there and that those bad people weren't necessarily any less or any more than who you are now and that you can become this person if this happens and you're put in this position so it's very important to understand that you're not perfect and that there is this ability for you to go to the worst part of your psyche um, if you're pushed to that point so yes there's book reviews you know there's so many things i'm also um struggling to get through as you can see up here beowulf probably the toughest read because i'm not a big fan of reading um historical english as i may put it because it's a translation from old um i want to say danish (laughs) to english Uh, and it's written written by 
J.R.R. Tolkien and edited by Christopher Tolkien. And it's a very difficult read. Um, doesn't make it, I think I'm like 55 pages in and there's only 100 pages in the book for, for the story. Um, so yeah, very difficult for me, but I shall move on. Um, after the history or book review podcast, we'll go for a brand new guest. Uh, I look forward to that. Not sure what the topic will be yet, but we'll, get, we'll, we'll find out closer to the time. Then we're on to an, the, another film review and, and then another news slash update podcast. And by that time, we will have been through, and I think I'm right in saying this, we'll have finished January, we'll be all the way past February as well. I want to say I'm right in saying this. Let me look at my, my plan, my diary, my calendar. Yeah, wow, yeah. So the ne- by the time we do the next update podcast, we'll be into March. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to that because at the same time, I don't want to be saying it's skipping my life away because every minute is precious and I'm going to learn something from everything. But I am going to say is that we'll be that one step further of more people getting vaccinated, you know, shove that stuff <laughs> into my arm now, just get it in there, save some lives. Let's do this. Um, and, and we can all, you know, the more people vaccinated, the better things would be. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm going to say it like that. I think that, that the people on the front lines who are nurses and doctors are saving lives. And um, that's, that's, you know, heroic. And they are the real heroes at the moment. And they represent the best part of our nation and, and, and the best part of who we are, of showing strength when there is none. So... Ending on a positive, heroes out there. There are heroes out there. and You don't have to look too far for them. And there's going to be a lot to talk about in the coming podcast and the update podcast. And I hope you haven't found this podcast too uh, much lecturing or me going on about what I'm doing and stuff like that. But I do hope you find it as a way to think to yourself, well, you know, this idiot can do stuff like that. And so can I. Um, and, <laughs> and use it. Use it as fuel. You know, crush me. Use, use that. <laughs> and think that damn i beat him already and that was easy and that's a good that's a good way of thinking about it and i know it's immature but sometimes we've got to use immature ways of motivating ourselves in order to get motivated and and, and, and finish tasks that are, are difficult and although you may sound a little bit silly when you do it but at the end of the day you achieve something more and that's like uh, as our previous podcast said doing your bed in the morning and you're you've already accomplished something in the day even if the rest of the day goes wrong the positives in the smaller things we'll end this podcast by saying this it's not the big things in the world that change the world it's the small little deeds that people do on a regular basis that make the world a better place and it keeps the darkness at bay this has been a taylor's tales podcast this is chris's corner i'm your host chris taylor Thank you so much for listening.